Uh, special thanks to Spur um, for all that you do on behalf of the city and behalf of our Bay Area. Um, it is an honor to be here as the mayor to recognize some of these award winners, um, but also really to be here to thank Spur for all of your hard work on behalf of our city, um, to all of the people that work day to day at Spur, to your board of directors. Um, thank you on behalf of a grateful city for everything that you do. I want to quickly recognize uh, the award winners uh, real quick. First of all, I want to say congratulations to Sonali Bose. Where is Sonali? Round of applause. There she is. All right. I've got a chance to work with Sonali for years as she's running the finance of the MTA, does an amazing job. Sonali, congratulations on your award. Uh, to Kelly Cornell, where's Kelly? Kelly, stand up, say hi to everyone. Kelly, thank you. Um, the Chief Urban Forester for our Rec and Park Department obviously does amazing work, not without controversy here in our city, so thank you for all that you do. Um, Jesus Moore, where's Jesus? All right, there. Our Chief Information Officer with our Fire Department. Thank you, Chief Hayes White, for being here. Thank you for all that you do with our, for our technology, for our fire department. Um, thank you very much. Congratulations on your award. Where is the, the entire Dahlia housing portal team? All right. This is the group that streamlined our affordable housing online services. Thank you for everything that you've done on behalf of so many people in the city of San Francisco. Congratulations to you. Um, and lastly, to our encampment resolution team. Where are they? These are the individuals making a huge difference on our streets every single day. I see Muhammad and Jeff there with you. Um, congratulations, honestly, thank you for everything that you do on behalf of the city. So, listen, congratulations everyone. I hope everyone has a wonderful evening and I would like to bring up uh, two amazing people, um, both our city administrator, Naomi Kelly, and the mayor's chief of staff, Jason Elliott. Thanks everybody. Good evening, everyone. So this time last year, we were here at the MFACT Awards and I, Mayor Lee was, came up here and we had this long running joke that, hey, I've been with the city for almost 20 years and I've never got an MFACT Award. And he, he said the same thing too, because you know he started his career uh, with the, the whistleblower program, then the Human Rights Commission. And he said he never got an a, a MFACT Award. And he, he actually mentioned that when he got up and gave his remarks. And so I thought about it this year, about all the things that he did, not as mayor, because as mayor you have 30, a 33,000 workforce who if you have an idea, they move heaven and earth to try and implement it if they can through the bureaucracy. And we get wonderful uh, uh, programs that come out of mayor's ideas, board of supervisors' ideas. But as city administrator, there are some things that he did that he, he did not get the credit for, and he allowed the other people who implemented it to get up here and get the awards. One was, as city administrator, he implemented 311. Yeah. He was the one who worked with then Deputy City Administrator Ben Rosenfeld, who then hired uh, Ed Riskin to come in and get the 311 call center off the ground. As city administrator, Unfortunately, the events of Hurricane Katrina happened, and he then with uh, Tony Irons, who was with the uh, San Francisco Public Utilities Commission, traveled to New Orleans, met with the, in the Broadmoor neighborhood with then activist Latoya Cantrell, who's now the mayor of New Orleans, and out of that started the Lifelines Council. And out of that started the Neighborhood Empowerment Network, and much more to make sure that our city is resilient. And when I talk about he, he just didn't say, hey, I have an idea. He was the one rolling up his sleeves with writing the white paper and the standard operating procedures and getting the financing for it. And, and even going back to the Department of Public Works, as the Director of Public Works, he started the Community Clean Team events that happen almost every weekend. And, and Mohammed Nuru is uh, uh, through with working with Mohammed, who is then the Deputy Director there, that is now just part of our institution, that we take for granted that this is just government. But it was his hard work and rolling up his sleeves, along with some great deputies who, got, who had many of these events uh, put in place. And with that, I think we should honor him with an MFACT Award. And <laughs> And I think Gabe is going to figure that out. <laughs> Jason. Thank, thank you, Naomi. Uh, Naomi and I, uh, since mid-December, have had 
I guess the honor, and I guess I could even say the, the privilege and the pleasure of going to events that we get to remember Mayor Lee and talk about his legacy and what he meant to us and to the city and to the, to the Kelly family. Um, and it's, it's, it's so much fun to go under these terrible circumstances, to go around the city to events and get to talk about Mayor Lee and his legacy. Uh, it's not often that we get to do this in a group of um, committed public servants bureaucrats in the nicest way you can mean that word. Um, and, and ultimately, when we talk about Mayor Lee's legacy and all of the things that Naomi just mentioned, we're so keenly aware that Mayor Lee's legacy, which we're so committed to, is the work that all of you are actually doing. You are the ones that are fulfilling Mayor Lee's legacy. Um, and you know, those of us who work inside this building depend on everyone uh, at MTA Finance and uh, in the camp, yeah, I said, <laughs> Thank you, Sonali. And, and on the encampment resolution teams and in all of the departments doing all the good work, that's Mayor Lee's legacy. So it's not often, as I mentioned, that we get to come and celebrate him, but do so in a way where we're actually able to look out and say thank you because it's exactly your work that is that legacy that we're so proud to keep going forward. So uh, with that, congratulations to all of the winners of the MFAC Awards tonight, uh, and uh, have a good time tonight. It feels, doesn't it feel so right to celebrate Mayor Lee on a moment when we're celebrating the great work of city employees and his passion, his compassion, his doggedness to get stuff done um, is so unique and it's uh, reflected in the work that you all have done. I've had the honor of working on two, thing, two initiatives with the city of San Francisco that I think will forever change the course of history. One was as a young lawyer on the same-sex marriage case in Dennis Herrera's office back in 2004, which was a series of litigation that gave rise to Prop 8, which was then overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court um, validating and legalizing gay marriage. And the second was saving public housing. Um, it was a super courageous thing that Mayor Lee did. Many other people might say, hey, those are, those are federal buildings, federally funded, not my problem. And he did the complete opposite and said, we're a wealthy city. We have wealth of knowledge and treasure and talent, and we're going to take over these buildings. And those are the kind of entrepreneurial, courageous feats that we celebrate in the city. The private sector technology doesn't have an, a, a monopoly on entrepreneurship. It exists here at City Hall as well. And so again, we're excited to hear the stories from all of you. I um, want to quickly recognize some of our elected officials here today. Carmen Chu, assessor recorder and spur board member. Uh, City Attorney Dennis Herrera, Supervisor Hillary Ronan, Assembly Member Phil Ting, and former Mayor Willie Brown, who might be here. Um, also, our sponsors for this event, Bridge Housing Corporation and San Francisco International Airport, as well as our city government sponsors, and Chris Gruel of New Deal Advisors, our finance chair for this event. Thank you, Chris, very much for your support and your partnership. So with that, let's begin. I'm pleased to announce our first Good Government Award winners of the evening from the, office, from the Mayor's Office of Housing and Community Development, City Administrator's Office, and the Digital Services team, the Dahlia Housing Portal team. Dahlia stands for the Database for Affordable Housing Listings, Information, and Applications. How was it before with the lottery itself? It was onerous. You had to actually go to the developer and turn in your application and then they then gave you a, like a circus ticket. If you lost that ticket, you don't know what your lottery number is. Was I really in the lottery? You also had to fill out an application for each and every development. There was just not any one place to find out about affordable housing opportunities. People don't like to hear, oh, that's not our department, go talk to whomever. What we're trying to create is a one-stop resource where really we have a good guide to how affordable housing works and where you can find it. The challenge for us was to build this electronic system but make it very, very accessible and get all of that information into this one place. Now, 
every application is accounted for with the Dahlia system. People are feeling a lot better about knowing where they stand right up front. We're also able to hook people up with subsidy programs more easily this way. We're providing them with better resources. We actually automatically check to see if people are eligible for certain housing preferences, which give them sort of an extra advantage in the lottery. And if they look like they qualify, we will actually proactively, in the process of applying, nudge them and say, hey, you have a chance to get this preference. Data collected through Dahlia can actually eventually shape housing policy in terms of where housing is constructed and what kind of housing we build. We're working more with the community in terms of deciding what their priorities are. We have a new source of data about what people are looking for, and we hope that that will provide useful information as the city continues to grow its affordable housing stock. We are so proud of the Dahlia team. They have taken on a huge task and went through it methodically, expertly, with uh, such great results, and we couldn't be happier with their work. This is an epitome of good government providing customer service to the residents of the city and county of San Francisco. A flagship program of what City's Digital Services is all about. Thank you for your hard work and dedication. This is an award well deserved. Naomi and I would like to invite the Dahlia Housing Portal team to the stage from MoCD, Maria Benjamin, Barry Roeder, and Michael Solomon, and from Digital Services, Ashley Myers. Uh, we're, we're pleased to present this award to this team that's done so much to help so many people in San Francisco. And we're pleased to receive it. Didn't we look like the Mod Squad walking through the, a variation of the Mod Squad? Uh, <laughs> good evening and thank you so much. On behalf of Michael and Barry and Ashley, um, we really are honored by this recognition. It takes many farmers to grow a beautiful Dahlia. Dahlia is the name of our system and uh, First of all, I want to thank our MoCD director, Kate Hartley, and Brian Chu, uh, Benjamin McCloskey, our, our manager, our management team, um, and uh, Mayor Lee for their uh, support and encouragement going, getting this program off the, off the ground. We have made a difference in the lives of people applying for affordable housing at a time when the need uh, and the uh, assistance is most uh, needed. Um, the MoCD team who work every day on making the Dahlia system even better, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say all their names. There are six of them that uh, uh, work with us every day to test the system. MoCD uh, city employees who um, have spent hours, countless hours, working on the system. The Mayor's Office of Civic Innovation, especially Jay Nath and Krista Kanalakis. Where are you, Krista? You're here someplace. Um, they hooked us up with our Googlers from the Civic Bridge team. Yay, Google. Uh, they gave us uh, uh, four months of their time, of, of staff time, to help us develop the Dahlia system and make it really meet the needs of people that are going to use it. Um, we had a Dahlia, we have a Dahlia Steering Committee, so I want to thank the Dahlia Steering Committee and OCII, the Office of Community Investment and Infrastructure, that commission. Thank you for your support and encouragement, but also those tough questions that uh, kept us uh, honest. Um, the, uh, the, our wonderful Dahlia Task Force, we created this system not just isolated. A lot of times, uh, uh, local government will create a system and say, here, there it is, use it. We didn't do that. We created this uh, system bit by bit, and each bit we had housing counselors and uh, developers, nonprofit and for-profit, housing advocates testing this system so, and we, implemented their guidance. Exergy and Vertiba! 
I'm going to call out Roshan because she never gets a call out. Uh, the builders and designers of this system who have really, really worked uh, uh, on the ground with applicants and ha people actually living in the city's uh, affordable housing rental stock. Uh, couldn't be here without you guys. Thank you very much. Code for America uh, and your invaluable contribution to the GovTech movement and support for this project. Okay, I'm almost done. Uh, we really do need to thank all the folks that gave us their, their, their input and part uh, that were part of our user testing, the Mayor's Office of Disability, Lighthouse for the Blind, and the many, many current and residents of affordable housing and applicants. Um, a special shout out to Caritas Property Management. They were their leasing agents who gave up their time and came and tested this system. And they were the first uh, leasing agents, the first private developer in the inclusionary housing program to jump in and use the Dahlia system, took the leap of faith, and uh, they were our guinea pigs, and they sat with us through all of our project fixes and bugs, and it works now, and it is changing the lives of, of people applying um, more than we can ever, uh, that we, uh, just to the amount of uh, that we hoped, and the future is here to come. We're, we'll keep continuing to work on the project until um, it is, uh, 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 even better than it is now. So thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, please join me in honoring our next winner, Jesus Mora, Chief Investment Officer, San Francisco Fire Department. When I first started working in the city, I really was working as a contractor and I worked in the initial 911 project, which was when the Department of Emergency Management was first created. After a few years, then I realized that this was something that I really wanted to do. The main thing that I was involved in is to determine this dashboard that lets us know exactly at any time how many ambulances we have, how many of those are private ambulances, and how many additional resources we need to provide. Working for the fire department, I get to interact with many other departments, and that's something that I actually enjoy. For example, with 311, we created an interface so when somebody enters a complaint that is a fire department issue, we can get that information right away, and it can be entered into our system so we can dispatch an inspector in a timely manner. It really makes it possible to respond to a citizen much faster than we did before. Every day, firefighters are paramedic, save lives and protect property from fire and natural disasters. I'm not there, but it really gives me satisfaction to know that I can help them by providing information in a timely manner. Jesus Moore is a huge asset for our department and really for the city as a whole. He oversees all of our IT infrastructure, which is vast. Uh, it is our patient care reports, it's our scheduling system, and Jesus is the unsung hero. Without a uniform, he is my hero in that he does so much for everyone here in the San Francisco Fire Department. And really this department, going from a carbon paper department to all the technology that we embrace now is in large part due to Jesus's innovation and unique talents and abilities. There is always going to be crisis and we just have to try to stay calm and solve these issues how they come. Fortunately, I have a team of professionals that are always there when we need to resolve a problem. And at the same time, I know that we are doing our best to deliver services that are always going to be there. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much to SPUR. Uh, I'm Chief Joanne Hayes-White with the San Francisco Fire Department. Thank you. Congratulations to all of the other honorees tonight. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce the next honoree tonight, and that is the San Francisco Fire Department's Chief Information Officer, wonderful man who I have the privilege of not only working with but calling friend, and that is Jesus Mora.
Thank you. Good evening. Uh, when, first, I want to thank Spur for organizing this event and recognizing the quiet work that city employees do every day. Um, secondly, I want to thank the chief for nominating me and for always having been a champion of new technology initiatives. I mean, we started with almost nothing, and we had really uh, eventually created a system that is get used every day and that the end users really enjoy, and that gives me a lot of pleasure. Um, and um, finally, uh, I'm really very happy to work in the fire department because I know that the work that is being done every day is helping people. And I feel that I, you know, somehow I contribute to that effort. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Please join me in honoring our next award winner, Kelly Cornell, Chief Urban Forester of the San Francisco Recreation and Park Department. The three main products of my job would be safety of the trees, safety of the public, maintaining the trees, and meetings. A lot of our work is responding to some kind of event. Tree failure, broken tree, anything where you have to react. The Greenways program started over 20 years ago. The department was making a lot of waste and we were paying a lot of money to have it hauled away. Since this park was man-made, the byproduct of what we create should be dealt with and put back in the soil for nutrients. So now I would say 99.9 .9 of all the green waste that we create does not go to a landfill. Camp Mather has been impacted negatively by insects. They naturally occur up there all the time. Then you add the rim fire and all the other fires that we had, we lost a lot of trees. We've removed up to 4,000 trees so far. Now we're gonna wait and see how effective it was. And then after that, we'll go to replanting. It started out as a rumor that the Redwood Grove was being used for the bicycles and kids making jumps. But when I got down here, these kids should be having mining contracts because they basically carved out the whole northern embankment of the Redwood Grove. Then we found out that the trees were being used as support beams for their banks, jumps, and berms. It had to go. Brought in heavy equipment and basically took an area and turned it back as close as we could to what it was before. It looks 100% better. Kelly Cornell, one of the Recreation and Park Department's most outstanding and colorful employees. He's our very own Lorax. Kelly speaks for the trees, actually all 131,000 of our trees in our system, and is really the individual who is responsible for managing the team that ensures the health and preservation of our amazing urban canopy. The best part of my job, and this does sound cheesy, but knowing back in 1982, city and county gave me a chance, and I'm still here. I get to sit in a redwood grove like this, either restore damage or take an area that needs some help, or after a storm, try to make an area safe so people can continue on with their lives. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name's Phil Ginsberg. I'm the general manager of your San Francisco Recreation and Park Department. So there's a saying, there's a Native American saying, we didn't inherit the earth from our ancestors, we are borrowing it from our children. And our proud awardee, Kelly Cornell, is making sure that we return it to them in good condition. The Lorax, as I like to call him, with limited resources and 900,000 bosses, some of whom want him to take the tree down, others of them don't want him to touch it, he has figured out a way to preserve our incredible urban canopy, 135,000 trees in, in our parks. And yes, he is caring for them deeply. 
Uh, you should be so proud. Colleen, Sarah, Jessica, I know you are also proud. The Recreation and Park Department is thrilled to recognize Kelly Cornell. Feels weird to be let out of the park. Um, <laughs> anyway, to Colleen, Sarah, Jessica, and my right-hand man, Kevin Jackson, thank you for being here. Bill Ginsburg, general manager for number seven now. Eight. Uh, eight? But who's counting? Yeah. For uh, continuing to uh, move urban forestry in an upward motion. But my biggest gratitude goes to uh, my boss, Dennis Kern, because he believes in us. Thank you. Isn't it awesome the, the diversity of different types of award winners and fire and, and trees and housing and just all the different aspects that um, these great men and women uh, work in in the city. And we're going to keep that up with the homeless encampment team. This is uh, from the Port of San Francisco, San Francisco Public Works, and the Department of Homelessness and Supportive Housing, the encampment resolution team. The Central Waterfront Navigation Center is a village-like complex of modular units connected by decks and outdoor courtyards, and it shelters 64 residents until they can be transitioned into more permanent housing. The Central Waterfront Navigation Center grew out of efforts to continue the model that started with two other navigation centers. The Mission Street Navigation Center was sort of the catalyst behind this one here. In terms of the design and the way that it was laid out, modular so that it could be placed and then removed is brilliant. We have about three years to operate there and then it will be completely removed. The mobile units were quick to procure. They're easy to relocate, but two, they also offer a scale that's intimate so it's not an overwhelmingly large space. That combined with the outdoor courtyards and trellised areas really provides for a more restorative environment for folks to get back on their feet. People who we encounter on the street because we're trying to resolve an encampment, we offer them a placement, and it's generally a time-limited placement. But if we can identify that they have a priority one status to be placed in permanent supportive housing, we move them to what we call a pathway bed or a bed where we can hold them until the placement can happen. A place for people to sleep and access to bathrooms and showers, congregate space where people can get meals on their schedule and not on a standard meal schedule, outdoor space so that you can deal with pets, access to benefits, access to medical care, both physical and behavioral health. It was important that the community be supportive of the project and what it was trying to do. We had various community meetings. I really have to give the Dog Patch a lot of credit. They were engaged, they were supportive, great partner. On behalf of the Port of San Francisco, we're so honored that our staff uh, collaborated together to achieve such a remarkable result uh, for the city and county of San Francisco, uh, both for the residents of the Dog Patch area and for the homeless uh, folks that weren't camping. And I want to give a huge shout out for Tom Carter, who is being honored um, in this award. And I'm just very thankful that all his hard work ended in such a, such a great outcome. So I, I want to thank everybody from Public Works and from the Port as well as our staff at HSH, especially Scott Walton, who's received this award. This really takes a team effort to address homelessness in San Francisco, and this is just a great example of how different departments and multiple staff come together to make things happen for our housed and our unhoused neighbors uh, here in San Francisco. From Public Works, I want to thank our team uh, that worked with the various agencies. This was a unique uh, site, and uh, Paul DeFreitas and uh, their whole team, thank you for doing a great job. We work together collaboratively in really developing you know, the first from scratch brand new navigation center. This is a great example of multiple departments coming together and creating something that is working.
All right, good evening, everyone. Hope we're having a good time. I want to really thank Spur for uh, putting on these awards. It's very, very important that those who work hard and you know they're behind the scenes that really get work done uh, be recognized. So I'm really proud to be here today, but more importantly, uh, all the work that the three agencies uh, have been doing together to really take the next step in solving uh, the problem of homelessness, providing a place for people to be able to go. Our city uh, desperately needs it, and uh, behind the scenes, there's a huge number of city employees that are trying to make that change. Our team, obviously, Jeff and Rod from the port uh, have been leading the way, but today, special recognition to Tom Carter, representing the port of San Francisco. Congratulate him, come on up, Tom. Scott Walton from the Department of Homelessness. And Paul DeFreitas from Public Works. Come on up, Paul. And Scott's going to uh, give the presentation, so come on up, Scott. Thank you. So on behalf of Paul DeFreitas and from Public Works and Tom Carter from the Port of San Francisco, we are truly honored and greatly appreciate this war award and thanks to Spur and city government for making this possible. Um, the Port of San Francisco provided the Central Waterfront Navigation Center with a home um, and a place for us to assist the persons experiencing homelessness. The three of us would like to thank Elaine Forbes, the Port Executive Director, for the nomination for this award. Tom Carter has also noted the support of the Port's Special Projects Director, Brad Benson, the Manager of Homeland Security, Ken Tashian, and the Maintenance Division. I also want to uh, say that Tom, as he noted in the video, participated in the shared effort of gaining and maintaining the support of our site neighbors. We really want to thank the Dog Patch Neighborhood Association for its help and its welcome to their community. The Central Waterfront Navigation Center is a beautiful program that is also amazingly functional. And I thank Paul as the lead architect and leading the architecture and landscape group that included Alejandro Pimentel and Iona Harrison. I hope I did those names justice. Paul also wanted us to appreciate the construction work of Kevin Spohr and the BBR construction, Michael Clancy and Treaty Construction, and Brent Hoffman and the Design Space Modular. Their work brought this together, and it really is a beautiful space that's floating on top of a street for three years and then will be removed. But I also have to thank Mohammed and the entire Public Works crew because their Street and Environmental Services Division works with us every day as we partner with our outreach and resolution on the streets. The Department of Homelessness and Supportive Housing is responsible for the outreach for and the operations of this program. The project began before the creation of the department and I would like to thank the leadership and support of the Human Services Agency from the beginning of the Navigation Center programs and from the beginning of this particular site. But my thanks is also to the leadership of the new department. It provides us, while we're trying to grow the department, an opportunity to both continue and grow our amazing programs. We have to thank our providers who help run this particular program, Episcopal Community Services and the Providence Foundation. I also need to thank our government and community relations staff for helping us fit into a community, the San Francisco Homeless Outreach Team and the Encampment Resolution Team who connect with the clients on the street and bring them to this program. More importantly, I celebrate this award, I think we celebrate this award because it's a collaboration of multiple departments and not just our three departments. Every day we also work with the San Francisco Police Department, the Department of Emergency Management, the Department of Public Health 311 and 10 other city and local government departments to respond to homelessness in our city. We three are honored by this award. We thank our families and friends for their support. We share this honor with our coworkers and our leaders. And we celebrate that we represent this kind of collaboration that can respond to serious city issues and move them forward. And in addition, I have to thank the San Francisco Police Department for adding to my award by presenting me with the tag, Scott Ain't No Punk. <laughs> thank you.
All right, folks, we have one more. Final award winner tonight is going to Sonali Bose, Deputy Director of Finance and Information Technology, CFO of SFMTA. In my career, I've been extremely lucky to have worked both in public and private. And one of the things I love about the public sector is you actually get to see the stuff that you do on the street. When I first came to the agency, I realized that there was a huge structural deficit. And in order to do the work well, we needed more resources. So I pretty much combed every possible way to get revenue. And it included, for example, increasing our advertising revenues, which were about 400,000 when I came. And then now they're almost 30 million a year. Looking at our interest income, looking at our fares and fines and fees. For example, the SF Park pilot. It was the first pilot in the country, or actually in the world, where we based parking rates on demand. We got a huge grant from the federal government again to help us do that. It was extremely successful and so now it's being launched throughout the whole city. I'm a big risk taker. If you give me a problem and you tell me I can't do it, I'm going to get it done. My tenure here has always been tenuous, let me put it that way, <laughs> because to me you have to take risks in order to leave a legacy. You can't just sit here and push paper and do debits and credits. I really am interested in policy, how you can implement policy through the back end. You know, before I came, uh, the agency could not issue debt. So one of the things we did was we changed the charter in 2007 to allow the agency to issue debt. And we're the highest rated revenue bond in the country. We've had four rating increases from Standard & Poor's and Moody's. So it's been a combination of just combing up every source possible and not taking no for an answer and just doing whatever it takes to get the revenue. I nominated Sonali beyond the finance functions, really brings a, a lot more to the agency uh, than just her title suggests. Uh, she's extremely passionate and tenacious as anyone who's had to interact with her would tell you. Very, very dedicated uh, to making transportation better in this city so she does not stay within her lane of CFO. She's built a great team but it's really her passion and commitment that have made her so incredibly effective. A fierce advocate for and protector of uh, what we do here at the MTA, particularly Muni Service. I have a great staff so you can't do this alone. You know, you, Everything that I've done is because I have a great team. Good evening, everyone. I want to join in recognizing all of the awardees and all the other hardworking public servants who work every day to make this city a better place for, for the people who live, work, and visit here. My name is Ed Riskin. I'm your Director of Transportation, and it's really a great honor uh, for me uh, to be able to recognize Sonali. I think um, probably everybody in this room has had some interaction with Sonali, a few of them positive, the rest of them otherwise. <laughs> But it's all been in the service of transportation in the city. As we were sitting there in between the speeches, she's trying to talk to me about budgets and interagency agreements. And I think that pretty, much, that pretty much speaks to who she is and how she operates. So please join me in honoring our Deputy Director and Chief Financial Officer, Sonali Bowes. I have a speech because I was told I had to behave, so I'm going to read it. Otherwise, I probably will say something that will uh, not be appropriate. So when I told Ed that I would not leave the agency until I got this good of, uh, government award, I, th I think he turned in my nomination within the hour. So, so thank you, Ed, for nominating me. Um, it's been a wild ride, both literally and figuratively. And those of you who work with me know that I have many faults, but I hope that you also think that I helped in some way to move the MTA forward. Um, it's hard to believe I lasted 12 years in the MTA, and every day I've been in some sort of trouble with somebody. Um, and I think I've made, I'm probably the longest tenured finance person at Muni and MTA. I was Gabe. As a matter of fact, Gabe and I had a bet 12 years ago who would be the last person standing. And Gabe, I think you may win this one. Um, so let me just say I've been so impressed with the city staff that I work with, that everybody's so committed and talented, 
particularly those at the MTA, who work long hours with very little recognition. So a shout out to the MTA folks here. Um, yeah. Particularly the members of the finance and technology teams, of which I couldn't have done anything without. Um, thank you for all your support and your great work during, over the past 12 years. So most of you have an impression that there's not a fair fine on fee that I don't like. That's not quite true. What I love are increases to fair fine <laughs> fees. To help fund this incredible transportation system we have, particularly Muni. Um, as I leave the city, I leave you with a plea to support the city's transportation system because this great city deserves a great system. Please pay your fare. And it's okay to get a parking ticket and get your cars towed. It's all right. Um, so if anybody wants my job or knows somebody who you think might want to do my job, please forward my names to Ed. I need some time with them, my successor, to show them where I hide the money, particularly from Ed. So. Lastly, I'd like to close by sharing a poem that summarizes my 12 years with the MTA Finances. It's by an anonymous author. It's called The Cork and the Whale. A brown cork fell in the path of a whale who lashed it down with his angry tail. But in spite of the blows, the cork arose and floated before the whale's nose. Said the cork to the whale, you may flap and sputter and frown, but you never, never can keep me down. For I'm made of the stuff that is buoyant enough to float instead of drown. Thank you so much. Now, now you know why we put her last. I hope you can understand that. Um, thank you to all the award winners. Thank you for coming. Thank you to the Spur Board, Faye Sand, the chair of our board, and everyone else who's here. And have a great night. <laughs>